Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. My name is Melanie Piazza and I work for the Center for Accessible Living in Bowling Green. Uh, this week we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act or the ADA. Um, the ADA was signed into law on July 26, 1990 by President George H. Bush. Uh, the ADA protects people with all sorts of disabilities, physical disabilities, mental disabilities, emotional disabilities, and it makes it possible for us to work, live, and have fun in our communities like everyone else. Uh, because of the ADA, there were some really cool things that happened. Uh, public buildings have ramps as well as steps. Uh, elevators have braille panels. TVs have closed captioning. Sidewalks have curb cuts. Uh, public transportation is accessible. There's so many other things. Uh, the ADA makes it possible for people with disabilities to go to school, compete for jobs, and to live independently. Um, and as my part of this week's celebration, I'm going to be reading a story called All the Way to the Top, How One Girl's Fight for Americans with Disabilities Changed Everything. Uh, this story is about a girl named Jennifer Keelan. Uh, who has a disability herself, and even as a little girl, she advocated for people with disabilities to have equal rights. So, let me tell you a little bit about her. Jennifer Keelan may be small, but her voice is mighty. Yeehaw! Snowball responds, speeding up from a walk to a trot. Jennifer loves to go fast. But she knows she'll soon have less time for riding since she's finally old enough for school. She can't wait to make new friends. She's ready to go. Now I'm showing a picture of Jennifer on her brown horse snowball. Uh, her mother is standing next to her and her dad's in front of the horse holding the reins. The school's not far. Jennifer rolls outside down the sidewalk to the corner, but stop. A four inch curb is a cliff to someone who uses a wheelchair. Her grandpa eases her wheelchair over the curb. Though the drop jolts Jennifer, she makes it to the building, but stop. The school says Jennifer doesn't belong here because she uses a wheelchair. So the first picture I'm showing is Jennifer. She's on the sidewalk ready to go across the street, but there's a curb and she can't get down off the sidewalk. And the second picture is her grandfather. He's rolling her wheelchair to the school, but she has to stop again because there's steps going up into the door and she can't get up there. Instead, Jennifer and her mom find a different school that says she can attend kindergarten, but only for part of the afternoon when lunch is over. As Jennifer rolls in each day, everyone is already busy. She has to figure out what's going on and how to join in. Since most kids have never met someone who uses a wheelchair, her classmates are confused and even a little afraid. You'll never be one of us, some of them say. Jennifer knows they're wrong. She's just a friend waiting to happen. But how do you change someone's mind? She's not sure, but she's not about to give up. So the first picture I'm showing is Jennifer. She's come into the classroom in her wheelchair, um, but all of her classmates, they're already busy working on things. No one really is paying much attention to her. But the second picture, she has her hands rolled in a fist and she's ready and determined that she's going to do something about that. Jennifer and her family hear about activists who are working to make sure people with disabilities have access to public places like schools. They want to know more, so they attend a strategy meeting. Jennifer has never seen anything like it. The room is full of grown-ups with all sorts of disabilities. Some use wheelchairs, some use canes. None of them are sitting around waiting for things to change. They're shouting, laughing, and planning a big protest to get wheelchair lifts on buses. They turn to Jennifer. Do you want to come? Yes, she wants to go. So the first picture shows Jennifer sitting around a table with a group of people with all sorts of disabilities and they're all talking and working hard to plan what they're going to do next. And the next picture 
is two of those people coming up to Jennifer to ask her if she would like to join in and help him. Downtown, Jennifer rolls to the microphone and tells her story. She leads marchers through the streets chanting, the people united will never be defeated. It feels good to speak up for what she believes in. She can't wait to do it again. She's raring to go. So this is a big picture that shows Jennifer. She's up on stage in front of a microphone uh, talking to a big giant group of people who are all holding signs and chanting and they're really excited to be there. She protests in Phoenix, rolls through streets in San Francisco, waves signs in Montreal. The demonstrations don't always change people's minds, but Jennifer is used to that. Even when her neighborhood school finally agrees she can attend, she and her classmates with disabilities aren't allowed to eat in the cafeteria with everyone else. That hurts, but she keeps going. So the first picture, it shows her, so she's yelling and protesting in Phoenix. Uh, the second picture shows her rolling past the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Uh, the bottom picture shows her um, protesting in Montreal. And then the next picture shows her and a classmate who also uses a wheelchair. They're sitting outside the cafeteria uh, with the teacher who's telling them that they're not allowed to go in there. Working with other activists revs her up. Yet she can't help noticing that she and her sister are usually the only kids out there raising their voices. Still, she can't leave all the protesting to grown-ups. She knows firsthand that children with disabilities get ignored too, so she keeps speaking up. When Jennifer is eight, activists propose a new law called the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA. The law insists schools, governments, and businesses make room for all people, including those with disabilities. Jennifer feels like dancing. If it passes, it means sidewalks with curb cuts, buildings with ramps in addition to steps, and elevators with braille panels. It means Jennifer and her classmates with disabilities can finally go to the cafeteria with everyone else for lunch. So here's a picture with Jennifer and a lot of her other friends in the disability community just out uh, protesting and chanting and letting everyone know that they have rights to. Jennifer and her family watch the news for updates on the ADA, but reporters never mention it. She switches off the TV in frustration, wishing she could change reporters' minds on what's worth talking about. Instead, the Keelans get their updates about the ADA when activists' friends call. It's bad news. Members of Congress say the law will be too complicated and too expensive. They say it's just not worth it. Since the news station is ignoring people with disabilities, Jennifer and her friends are determined to find another way to make Congress hear their voices. It's go time. Her family buys plane tickets to Washington, D.C. So this first picture shows Jennifer and her mom. They're watching the news, hoping that the news will report on the ADA, but nothing. The next picture shows her mom getting a phone call from their friends telling her that Congress has not passed the ADA. And so the next picture, it shows Jennifer and her sister and they're excited because her mother is holding tickets to Washington DC. They'll just have to go there themselves. As they march down Pennsylvania Avenue, Jennifer has never shouted louder. What do we want? The ADA. When do we want it? Now. So this picture shows Jennifer. She is in downtown Washington, D.C., shouting at the top of her lungs with a group of other people with disabilities, all shouting and holding up signs to tell Congress that they want the ADA now. Finally, they reach the U.S. Capitol. But stop, a mountain of steps block Jennifer and other people using wheelchairs from the building where Congress makes laws. 
grown-ups slide out of their wheelchairs and start pulling themselves up the steps, they will make sure members of Congress know they are here. Jennifer's heart races. This is what she has been shouting about. I want to climb the steps, she says, but stop. The grown-ups think she's too young. You can't do it. Jennifer knows that this is not just about her. It's about her friends at school who were shut out of the cafeteria at lunch. It's about millions of other kids she's never met who get stopped at every turn. Jennifer wants to speak up for all the kids with disabilities who aren't there. I need to climb the steps. So the first picture shows Jennifer. She's, uh, she's rolled up to the steps of the, of the Capitol building and she's ready to get out of her wheelchair like everyone else, but there's a grown up who's stopping her because he doesn't think she can do it. And the next picture, it shows her determined. She is uh, getting out of her wheelchair and she is ready to crawl up those steps just like everyone else. She slides out of her wheelchair, scoots along the sidewalk to the bottom of the stairway, and puts her hands on the first step. She hauls herself up. Tiny bits of dirt and rock dig into her skin. She drags herself up another step. The crowd roars. Reporters surround her with cameras and microphones recording her gutsy climb. I'll take all night if I have to, she vows, and she keeps heaving hauling, dragging herself up those steps. She keeps going all the way to the top. So the first picture just shows her. It's a struggle, but she is just climbing up those steps. And the next picture, it shows her uh, newspaper reporters. They're taking pictures of her. They're filming her as she's crawling her way up to the steps to the Capitol building. Pictures of Jennifer climbing the steps flash around the world. Reporters start talking about the ADA. Members of Congress see the news, listen to the activists, and finally pass the ADA. So this first picture, it shows what looks like a newspaper uh, article, like a picture of her in the paper climbing up the steps. And the next picture shows President George H. Bush finally signing the ADA into law. Laws like the ADA don't change things overnight. Entrances have to be rebuilt, sidewalks redesigned, buses re-engineered. Slowest of all, minds have to change. So Jennifer will continue shouting and waving signs organizing and explaining, she will continue fighting for what she knows is right. Jennifer has places to go and nothing will stop her now. So this last picture shows Jennifer and she's in her wheelchair going up a ramp that has been built onto a building to let her get in. Uh, she has a friend with her and there is a girl in front of her who is blind and she's also using the ramp. She, uh, she's using her cane and her guide dog and the ramp is helping her as well. So now you see why the ADA is so important to us and why we are ex excited to celebrate the 30th anniversary of this. Now there's still a lot of work for us to do every day, but this week we're taking time out to celebrate this great law and the work so many others have already done. Thank you again for joining me.